We brought in a Freightliner with a Detroit DD15 engine to show you how the system contrasts on a newer truck. This is a 2011 model. A couple of quick points. When we did the connect and scan with the ESI truck tool, we found 13 different modules that we could connect to. As I scroll down the list, note that the tool has capabilities on both engine and body control, as well as the anti-lock brakes. This Detroit uses four controllers to control engine emissions. A little more complicated than the last system we saw. Let's show you a couple of key features. I selected the drivetrain module. Note the uniformity on the screen from module to module and even truck to truck. Let's go in and pull trouble codes. Again, this does active and inactive in one sweep if they're available. We have an inactive fault. I want to show you some of the troubleshooting that we have available on Detroit engines. Let's select one of the PIDs listed. Similar to what we saw on a previous truck, component locations, shortcuts to wiring diagrams, and a good troubleshooting guide for that trouble code. We also have the ability to link to the wiring diagrams and technical information. Similar setup to earlier, we can interact and actually find components via the wiring diagrams, and we also have the ability to search wiring diagrams. Let's go back and take a look at a data stream. Remember that I talked about using four different modules to control engine emissions. Different data is available in each module. When we bring that data list up, ESI truck will actually quiz the truck on what is available to view and bring a full list up on the screen. The drivetrain module we're into is concerned with controlling uh, DPF emissions. So you'll see a lot of the data values being related to DPF. In addition, we have some bi-directional controls we can do in the drivetrain module. Under special functions, you'll have the ability to change key parameters like road speeds. Under adjustments and settings, we also have the ability to force a regen on this truck. Select that menu and bring it up. It's going to give you the same breakdown we saw earlier. Hitting the info button will bring up more detail for that function. Let's go take a look at a different module. Remember, we found 13 different modules we can talk to, four of which are emissions related. We can go down and take a look at the exhaust gas treatment system, which should show a different set of data available. We can see that data list. On newer emissions related engines, data lists tend to be a lot longer as more sensors are utilized on the engine. Scrolling down through the data list shows you all the available PIDs. Note it's a considerably different list than we saw on the last controller. This one is related to exhaust gas treatment. We also have some bi-directional controls available on this module. Special functions brings another list of controls that are available. Finally, adjustments and settings lets us do the SCR replacement. We still have another engine module that's related to diagnostics that we want to show you. The diesel control is actually mounted on the engine. This will give us fuel pressure, cylinder kills, and a few other key tests. Let's take a look. On this truck, we have the ability to read and clear faults, and we also have the ability to look at a data list. On newer trucks, there's an extensive data list available. 
To help sort through all that data, we've added a sort feature on the side. If you want to see something like fuel injector pressure, we can simply call up all pressure related PIDs, scroll down through the list until we see what we need. We have three ways to display data, numerically, graphically, and as a gauge set. Let me start the truck and show you all three. We'll start with the numerical listing. Note how quickly the tool reacts. Let's flip to a graphical. We also have the ability to show as a gauge set. Different PIDs looked at different ways just helps the technician identify issues faster. While we have this truck running, let's go back and do cylinder cutouts. Under special functions, you'll see cylinder deactivation listed. Simply select which cylinder you want to kill, hit the off button, and you'll hear the engine drop that cylinder. The previous and next button allow you to move from cylinder to cylinder. Simple navigation, yet powerful tools to help you diagnose. Still have a few more Detroit features to show you. We have the ability to do some calibrations, including the EGR system and the fuel volume control valve. Another big one is injector coating. The ESI truck tool really simplifies this service process. By selecting coding, we get a list up of which injectors are available to code, pick which one you replace the injector on. It reads out the code and enables you to change it by pressing the continue button. Enter your code here. The code will be rewritten to the controller and you'll be ready to go. I backed up to the main menu to show you ABS diagnostics. Previously, we looked at a Bendix system on a Peterbilt. This system has a Meritor anti-lock braking system. Different system, same capabilities. Read and clear faults with troubleshooting is available on Meritor and Bendix systems. This truck does not have any faults stored to memory. We also have the ability to look at actual values. Some systems show wheel speeds in the data list. For those that don't, we've developed a wheel speed test also. Go into special functions and bring up the wheel speed test. The vehicle wheel speeds are now displayed on the screen. You can have someone take you for a drive to diagnose that or jack the vehicle up and spin the wheels accordingly. We also have actuations available. Each modulator can be fired individually. You can even turn the lights on and off on the dash. Too. 
Remember, at any time we can toggle to wiring diagrams or technical data that's available for the system. Pick which system you have and you'll bring that interactive wiring diagram up on the screen. Component locations are also available with anti-lock brakes. I've shown you the extensive coverage on ESI truck for freight liners. Let's pull in another vehicle. Welcome back. We pulled in another vehicle. This time we pulled in a freight liner with a Cummins ISB and an Allison automatic transmission. Before I get started on that though, I want to remind you we are going to have a live question and answer session later on. We encourage you to put your questions in the chat box. Make sure you send those off to them. We'd be happy to reply to them. Now, back to the truck at hand. Again, this is a freight liner. We wanted to show you something on the medium duty side. So we brought in something with an ISB Cummins and an Allison automatic transmission. I hit the connect and scan button and brought this list of coverage up for the vehicle. Interesting notes here again, engine, transmission, anti-lock brakes all covered, but we do do some body stuff on these vehicles also. Let's jump into that Cummins ISB. All right, there's our menu for what we can do on this vehicle. Uh, looks pretty similar to what we had on the ISX side, even though we've switched to the smaller ISB engine. Codes are available. We can pull faults and clear faults and do troubleshooting. Let's go take a look at the actual values. You'll see a consistent setup from vehicle to vehicle and from engine to engine. Let's take a look at that graphing again. I picked the accelerator pedal position sensor, brought it up on the display, hit my graphing button. I'm going to go hit the accelerator pedal a couple times. There's our accelerator pedal signal graphed on the screen. Data display is simple from, from truck to truck. Now let's take a look at some of the bi-directional controls on this ISB engine. Under actuators you see a couple of key functions right away. Listed out we have cylinder deactivation, uh, cylinder output test which is a key Cummins test. Simple test you perform every day. Special functions allows us to change a few key parameters. Let's go a little deeper into that. This one has an idle shutdown timer. Select that shutdown timer. The first thing it's going to do is go out and read what this truck is set for. It is an active idle shutdown timer. You see the screen, it's set for five minutes. If we want to change that, we've got two choices. Hit your continue button, you'll get an option on the screen. We can either disable the idle shutdown timer or simply change the time we want to do. If we just want to change the time, hit our timer button and continue. Check this box, enter the time that you want to change here. Now, we don't have a keyboard plugged into this right now. I'm sure earlier a couple of you guys might have noticed and said, hey, how are we going to enter that time? Simple enough. Hit your function key on the bottom, you'll see a keyboard pop up. There's an on-screen keyboard for the touch screen. Select your box. If we want to change that to 10 minutes, we're just going to enter a 10, hit continue. The time will be changed in the controller. One other key function that I'm sure you're asking for is under adjustments and settings. We have the ability to do the DPF regens. Uh, both forcing the regen for a truck that needs service or if one has been cleaned and you've got to reset the timers in the controller we've got the option to do that also. Now I mentioned Allison transmissions. Uh, full coverage for Allison automatic transmissions both on this truck and others. 
We can go back to the main screen. And again, no need to change computers, no need to change modules. We're just going to flip back to the home screen, select the other system we want to get into, rebuild the module accordingly. So here we are. We've got a few choices here. At the bottom, we see our Allison 1 or 2000 series fourth generation transmission. Select that, hit continue. We'll rebuild that VCI with the software it needs to scan the Allison. Our menu comes up, same capabilities. Trouble code options, actual values, where we're going to read live on this vehicle. You'll see our data list will change, but we'll still have the sort functions, but this list is going to be specific to that Allison. Now we also have bi-directionals on the Allison transmissions. We can actually fire each individual shift solenoid, command the torque converter clutch solenoid, go into special functions and do a clutch test for this transmission. And under adjustments and settings, we have the ability to do calibrations on the accelerator, accelerator pedal. Keep in mind too, the button on the bottom lets us toggle back and forth between diagnostic coverage wiring diagrams, and technical data. Component locations, again, all available. Watch the top of the screen here and you'll see it change. You can see some of the unique coverage that the ESI truck tool offers, some of the strengths on both heavy and medium duty. We still have another vehicle we'd like to pull in.